All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to tackle the steering on the HG P407. The truck's seen a lot of use since the last time it had a video of its own. It's been ragged up and down some pretty serious muddy hills, many of which it rolled back down. And on the last outing, it had a few fairly close meetings with some rocks. You'll also notice there's a distinct lack of door mirrors now. The stop ones lasted most of the first run. I replaced them with some rubber ones, which fell off and were lost forever. Anyway, being based on a Tamiya truck, the steering is terrible. You have to keep adjusting back and forth to compensate for every bump, and if the wheels are in the slightest of bind, all the steering servo does is bend the long linkage that goes between the crank at the front and the servo all the way at the back. As usual, I've been hunting around on Thingiverse and found this mount that replaces the plate at the front of the chassis. It should let us mount the servo right at the front, so we end up with a short direct linkage from the servo to one of the hubs. Before we can try it though, we're going to need to take the front of the truck apart, starting with the wheels. Now rather than wheel nuts, they're held on with three M3 screws, and when building I replaced the stock Phillips screws with cap heads. So far, they've stayed done up quite nicely. Other than taking a bit longer to fit, they work just fine. The M3 nuts that attach the drive flanges to the axles, however, weren't so good. On one run, the flange and the wheel rolled off all by itself and generally they all needed to be tightened up after an hour or so of driving. I replaced them with some good quality nylock nuts and some steel washers, and they've been staying tight ever since. Next we need to remove all the screws around the plate at the front of the chassis. There's two on either side, they're quite long, and the front ones have washers too, so we're going to need to keep them safe. From the underside we need to remove the screws attaching the front of the leaf springs to the mounts. They're long screws with nylock nuts. In the ends of the leaf springs there's also some metal tubes, so if they're loose remove them and put them somewhere safe. On the front there's two screws that attach the bumper to the plate that need to come out too, and there's also two screws that directly attach the plate to the chassis rails. To remove the bumper there's two more screws that attach the bumper to the metal leaf spring mounts, remove them and the bumper comes away. The plate is now free to move but we won't be able to get it out from between the rails. So we can pull the rails apart far enough, we need to remove some more screws down one side. First is the one side of the front body mount, then two screws that attach the brace that's under the front of the gearbox. Now, going back to the front, we can very carefully separate the chassis rails just enough to get the plate out. What we don't want to do is bend the rails enough to permanently put a bend in them. Now we have access to the front of the chassis, we can see how the 3D printed mount fits. Well, it does kind of fit between the rails. The holes do appear to line up. However, it's a little too wide. If we fit the leaf mounts, they want to sit alongside the plastic mount, but there's no space for them. That, and there's now a void between the inside of the chassis rails and the leaf mounts. Not good when we tighten up the screws. Now, there's nothing wrong with the idea. Replacing the plate at the front of the chassis is a good one. It just needs a little bit of refinement. So, after some messing around in CAD, here we have my version. The most obvious difference is it's a little shorter. The gap for the servo is also just slightly larger. In addition to the mount, there's also a pair of spacers that fill the voids in the chassis rails. I'll put the bits up on Thingiverse as a work in progress. The parts will work, but they'll most likely be slightly off here and there. With the spacers in and the servo mounted to the tabs on the rails, we can start putting the bumper bits back on. I've loosely fitted the leaf mounts to the plastic bumper, so we can squeeze the inside of the leaf mounts between the servo mount and the spacers. From the outside, we can refit the screws, using the ones with the washers on the front, where it clamps to the plastic of the bumper. Next, we can refit the leaf springs to the mounts with their screws and nylocks, not forgetting little metal tubes if you took them out. One of the bits that's a little bit off on the servo mount are the front holes that should line up with the tabs. There's enough flex in the plastic that you can still get the screws in, but it's not ideal. I had assumed that the holes run along the centre line of the mount, but actually they're slightly higher. Not the end of the world, but worth keeping in mind if you try the work in progress. We need to refit the three screws that we took out to spread the chassis rails. There's the two that go into the side of the cross member, and the single one that goes down into the chassis for the body mount. Nip them up, and we've got the mount ready to go. 
on the top of one of the hubs is an arm that has a linkage attached that goes off to the bell crank. We need to remove it so we can swap it to the other side so it sits at the front of the axle. It's held on with two very small screws that are well and truly Loctited in. With a good quality 1.5mm Allen key and some care, they will come out. Just make sure the key is nicely seated and whatever you do, don't let it slip. On the other side of the chassis, we need to remove the two flange nuts that attach the bell crank. There's just enough space that you can get a finger on the screw heads to remove the nuts. It's quite simple to remove. The steering linkage can now be removed from the chassis and the long linkage popped off the bell crank. We won't need any of the linkages, but we will be reusing the ball ends. Now at some point we might swap them for Traxxas ball ends or some other with less slop, but these ones will do for now. We'll need to dig out the steering servo from the radio box next. The first step is to take the lid off the box with its single screw and unplug the steering servo. For now we'll just pop the lid back on to save losing any bits. Now on the underside of the radio box we need to remove the floor. It's got four screws, three of which are quite easy to get at, but the fourth is a bit fiddly. But it's no match for a good ball-ended Allen key. Slide the floor out, which is easier said than done. You have to get the angles just right, but it will come out without taking anything else off. Now we just need to remove the servo mounting screws and the servo arm and lift the steering servo out. Back at the front of the chassis and we can install the steering servo in the new mount. The motor wires need to be bent out of the way, but other than that it goes in without any fuss. We need to install the four mounting screws, in this case M3x8s with some washers. And we also need to install a solid servo arm. Now this one is just one of the cheap aluminium ones. It's probably going to be a bit long, but I'm sure it will be good enough. On the hub furthest from the servo arm, we need to fit the steel arm to the hub with the two small screws. Now we really don't want this to come loose, so we're going to use some fresh thread lock on the screws. We just need to be careful not to get any in the steering mechanism. And very importantly, we need to keep an eye on the torque. We've got some very small screws that's going into what's most likely cast aluminium. It would be ever so easy to strip the threads. All we need is to bottom out the screws, then give them an extra little tweak. Any more is a bit of a risk. Now it's fitted, we can see a little problem. The arm all but hits the damper, and the damper will certainly get in the way of the ball end. We could have avoided the problem altogether by leaving the arm at the rear of the axle, but that ends up with some rather funky linkage angles. Luckily though, it's not at all difficult to move the dampers behind the axle. First, we need to pull the rubber boot down over the body so we can get at the screws. Then we can remove the two screws that attach the damper tower to the chassis. On the back there's two plain M3 nuts, and a finger around the back is enough to stop them spinning so we can get the screws out. At the bottom there's a long screw that goes into a captured M3 nut in the plastic mount. Remove it and transfer the bits to the back of the axle. The damper tower lines up best on the frontmost hole of the cross member that mounts the front of the gearbox. We need to remove the screw and reuse it to mount the tower. So far so good except the other hole is very close to lining up, but it's about a millimetre short. We need to extend the hole back just a little bit so it fits. Now a small file, or even better, a 2.5mm diamond bit in a Dremel will make short work of it. Grind out the hole a bit, and we can refit the tower. Again, the rear hole just uses the M3x6 we took out, screwing into the cross member. The front hole though will need a nut. Now we've got a couple of flanged M3 nuts left over from the bits we removed, so one of those will do nicely. With it all done up, we can slide the boot back up the damper, and we're done on this side. We just need to repeat for the other. Well, that looks pretty tidy, I think. Now the servo wire and motor wires need to be tied up so they don't get caught up in anything. A couple of zip ties is all we need to do the trick. We will need to get the servo wire up into the radio box, and the only good entry point is under the battery tray. Now I tried to get the connector through blind, but there's just not quite enough clearance. It's a lot easier just to remove the four screws mounting the tray, and pop the connector through the hole. Unfortunately the servo wire is a few inches short of reaching the receiver, so we're going to have to extend it. Now I'm not really a fan of long servo leads, thin wires and fairly high currents really aren't ideal. Adding more connectors in line is even worse, but for now an extension will work well enough. I still want to design a different radio box and shift servo mount that will end up getting around the problem. 
I'm going to use a lead that I found in a junk box with a servo socket at one end. We'll run it up into the radio compartment and fit a servo plug to make an extension lead. A standard 150mm extension lead will work just as well of course, but this is what I had on hand. We just need to plug it in, refit the radio box lid, flip the chassis over and refit the floor cover with its four screws and that's the back end sorted. OK, back at the front and we need to salvage a couple of rod ends for the new linkage that's going to go from the servo to the hub. We will need one of the steel balls for the servo arm, one of the ones on the bell crank will do the trick, and when fitting the ball to the arm we will use some thread lock, and we are going to install it on the innermost hole. For the linkage we've got some stainless M3 studding. We need to thread one of the rod ends on one end and clip it onto the servo horn. And now for the fun bit, we need to hold the linkage up to the hub's ball end while keeping the steering nice and straight. Then hold another rod end up against the threads and mark where we need to cut. We want the rod to be cut a millimetre or so short so we've got a little bit of room for adjustment. Now I'm going to remove the servo arm this time rather than pop the ball end off. These ones have been on and off a few times and I'm not sure how much life they've got left. With the studding cut to length we can thread on another rod end and refit the servo arm. Adjust the length so when the servo arm's parallel with the chassis the steering is straight. As the suspension goes up and down the steering is going to move, commonly known as bump steer, but try and get it as close as you can. Clip the linkage on and we can power it up and set up the radio. We initially want the trim and the sub trim set to zero and the end point set to something like 50%. Make sure the servo arm is as close to straight as possible mechanically, then use the sub trim or regular trim to nudge it just so it's spot on. Next we need to hold the steering at full lock and turn up the end points to get full steering. We want it just so the hub hits the stops, but not so far that the servo is pushing the axle across the springs. We need to do it both for the left and the right lock. The main thing is, when the truck's off the ground, we need to make sure that nothing catches or binds. A dodgy setup is more often than not what kills a steering servo. That just leaves putting the wheels back on, which I'm sure you don't really need to see. It's just three screws on each side after all. And there we go, so now for the real test. With the wheels on the ground, let's see how responsive it is. Well, that looks pretty good to me. It's infinitely better than the original setup. There's every chance it's actually going to go in a straight line now. And there should be some good steering control over rough ground too. While out and about, I popped the P407 in the boot of the car and had a quick test out in the woods. I say quick, I think I was out there for all of 15 minutes. But for a quick test, it was very promising. Nothing came loose and it held up perfectly. Even a slightly optimistic dismount didn't cause any damage. If there's any footage left, I'll just leave it running. But for now though, that's going to be it. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you got something to say. Bye guys!